Hi there. In this video, we're going to move away from lists for a second and introduce another data structure in Python, dictionaries. The primary motivator for dictionaries is the common need to store information as a set of keys and corresponding values. Imagine, for instance, that you want to store a list of restaurants along with the number of stars each one has. Let's try to do that with the data structure's knowledge that we currently have. We might store this information in a pair of lists. One list would hold the restaurant names, and the other list would hold the number of stars each restaurant has. Whenever we append a restaurant, we also append its number of stars. We must make sure that if a restaurant is at a particular index in restaurants, its number of stars is at the same index in stars. Whenever we need the number of stars for a particular restaurant, we have to use the index method to figure out at which index that restaurant lives, and then use that index in the stars list to get its number of stars. This solution isn't great. It's kind of a pain to keep two lists around, and it would be really bad if they somehow got out of sync with each other. Here's another approach. We could store a list of tuples, where the zeroth thing in each tuple is the restaurant name and the first thing is the rating. Now we only have one list to worry about. The downside is that looking up a particular restaurant's rating is still pretty difficult. We have to use a for loop to examine every tuple and find the one whose zero thing is the name of the restaurant we care about. What would be great is if we had a data structure where we could look something up by something other than a numerical index. Well, thankfully, Python has exactly that, and it's called a, look at that. a dictionary. A dictionary is a data structure used to store key value pairs. Let's go back to the restaurant example. In this version, we use a dictionary. We can declare an empty dictionary like this. It is similar to the way we declare an empty list, except it uses curly braces instead of square brackets. We can then insert key value pairs into our dictionary like this. Note that when inserting things into our dictionary, we use square brackets. This will be true when we retrieve things from our dictionary as well. It might look a little weird that we're using a string inside the square brackets here. You're used to using square brackets with lists, and when you're dealing with lists, the thing that goes inside the square brackets is an index, an integer. With dictionaries, however, the thing that goes in square brackets can be an integer, a string, and a number of other things. It's called the key, and it can be used more or less like an index. We can retrieve the value for a certain key the same way we retrieve the thing at a particular index in a list. We put the key in square brackets. Note that unlike lists, there isn't really a notion of appending to a dictionary the way there is with a list. You just set the value of a particular key using square brackets. If we try to access the value of a key that is not in our dictionary, this causes an error. Turns out we can use the in keyword to check if a particular key is in a dictionary. We can then use an if statement so that we only attempt to access the value of a particular key if that key exists. We could also use a try except statement. In the except block, the exception we need to catch is called key error. Okay, let's back up and step through some dictionary basics. A dictionary is a set of key value pairs. We can make an empty one like this, and we can set the value of a particular key like this. We can also give the dictionary some initial keys and values like this. Inside the curly braces, we put a comma-separated list of key value pairs where the key and its value are separated by a colon. In this example, then, the last line doesn't add the key ABC to the dictionary. Rather, it changes the value of the key ABC from 4 to 3. The keys in a dictionary can be of different types. This dictionary now has a couple of string keys and an integer key. You cannot, however, use mutable things as keys. This program attempts to add a list as a key with a value of 45. If you try to run this, the error that appears complains about an unhashable type. If Python complains about something being unhashable, it probably means you're using something as a key that shouldn't be used as a key. Okay, let's get rid of that line that was causing problems. Another thing to notice is that the values can be of different types. These types can be completely independent from the types of the keys. The values are less restricted. You can use mutable things as values. This means the value in a dictionary can, itself, be a dictionary. At this point, I should mention that dictionaries are mutable. Each time we add or modify a value for a key, we are changing the dictionary. Okay, let's say you have a dictionary and you just want to see what's already in it. You can print it the same way you do with a list. For a greater degree of control over how the things in the dictionary get printed, you can use a for loop to examine each key value pair individually. This for loop looks similar to a for loop over a list. The variable key, in this case, cycles through each key in the dictionary. You can then use that key to access the value. In this example, I'm going to assume that we don't know for sure what the types are of the keys and the values. For this reason, we should pass the key and the value to the str function to make sure that we can legally concatenate them. This is fine even if the key or the value is already a string. 
You can think of lists and dictionaries kind of like a coat check. The coat check gives you a piece of paper with some information on it. That information will help you retrieve your coat. In the case of lists, that information is an index. It's an integer. You can ask the coat check for a coat at a particular index, and the person at the coat check will give you a coat. If you give it a different index, you'll get whatever coat was at that index. If you give it a bogus index, one that is out of the range of acceptable indices, you cause an error. Behind the scenes, you can imagine that the list version of the coat check labels the coats sequentially with their indices. It is very easy to retrieve a coat based on its index. And if you recall, a list doesn't have to contain all the same type of thing. One of these things might not be a coat at all. I'm not sure if this works with actual coat checks, though. Okay, let's extend this analogy to dictionaries. With a dictionary-style coat check, the piece of paper you're given doesn't have to just have a number on it. It can have your name. For now, just assume that a dictionary is magically very fast at looking up a coat based on a name or whatever is on the sheet of paper. Again, if you give it a key that isn't recognized, it causes an error. Behind the scenes of this coat check, the labels and corresponding coats aren't stored sequentially. They're a little bit all over the place. But all the keys are still unique, and, as I said, the coat check system is such that it's still very easy to find a coat based on its label. The keys here don't all have to be strings. They can be integers, tuples, or whatever. So long as they're immutable. And, of course, the values or coats can also be of different types.